Hello there everyone, welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh and I'm reviewing the Gap Options tracking for the week expiring 922. This is beginner trader results. If you had risked an average of $1,000 per trade, win ratio is 93%, good week. Again, I do the Friday expirations always. We're doing the weeklies. The average return on invest was 231% for this particular week. And the reason I wanna show a smaller amount than I'm risking is so that people can get a sense of an idea that you can use a lower risk if you wanna trade. In fact, you could use a $500 risk per trade if you want to. Uh, again, that is totally, totally up to you. I appear on TV. This is me with Steve Forbes. It was a number of years ago, actually, at Fox News. So the world has changed since COVID. And it's even changing now, right before our eyes. What does that mean for us as traders? It means we have to take advantage of the opportunity when it comes along to be able to make money. You need to look out for yourself and your own finances. And trading offers that opportunity for anyone that wants to trade the stock market. But you gotta know what to do. Because if you don't know what to do, then you're gonna make poor choices. So part of the reason that I designed my Golden Gap 26 points is so that I can make good choices to put the odds in my favor. I feel like if the odds are in my favor, then I'm gonna have a higher chance of being profitable and having a big trade. If you have questions, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So everything I do is based on the Golden Gap 26 points, the Golden Gap strategy. Again, I'm looking out for finding good gaps, as many as I can find in any particular day. So while I tend to do one day trade or maybe two in the live trading room where I'm doing the day trades on margin, for options, I might do a handful of trades in one day because I'm letting them play out for a couple of hours or a couple of days. So I might be in a bunch of options at once. Now this particular week, again, there were 15 trades, one loser, zero break evens and 14 winners. 93% win ratio, this was a good week. It was not a week where we were terribly busy though. Um, this was not an earnings season week. So this is really was, was an interesting week because again, we're getting into the busy season right now, this month, all of October and November is earnings season for the market. So we're gonna have even more uh, gaps to do. But this is an average risk of $1,000 per trade. And again, if you did all the trades with the one loser, you would have made 36,925 with an average return on investment of 231%. And that does include the loser. So. We're gonna go over these. And if you decide that you wanna join the options newsletter, you do not have to take my class. However, that being said, I think you will trade better if you do my class. The main bread and butter of what I do is the rating system, the 26 points. I get up in the morning and I rate all the gaps that I want to, determine what I wanna trade, how and when, and then, then I send out the newsletter. So I'm writing the gaps for you if you just join the newsletter. Again, there is no prerequisites. So I have a six month subscription, which is $4,999 and a 12 month subscription, which is $6,999 for the newsletter. Again, that's not the class. That's just, you wanna get the trades, okay? If you decide that you wanna take the class, you can take the class, then you'll learn the system too. And that is obviously how I'm making the picks and I'm going through the ratings and I'm making the ratings myself. So let's go over and see what happened this particular week. So we did the SPY 445s that expired on the 22nd. I called it out the week before on the Wednesday. And I'm glad I did. I sent it out in the morning before the open. Most trades are sent in the morning before the open. Let's take a look at the, the day of the 13th here. So I called the 445s. You see, we were basically right at the strike then we gapped up so this trade was down actually before it went then i fell off a cliff again a put is a short you had selling here and you see where it went and again this is the day before the expiration you could have held it the last day of the expiration actually made more it's that this i mean this is one of those weeks where i don't suggest to do that all the time but you actually could have done it i think thursday was a solid exit though cost of the trade per contract was three dollars Four contracts, risk was $1,200, sold at thirteen. dollars profit was $4,000, and a return on investment of 333%. Again, this is doing it on the Wednesday and then exiting the following week on the Thursday. But besides that one particular day, I just want to point out, the trade was never down. So after this here, it fell off the planet. <laughs> so 
again, uh, there's a lot of ways you could have played this. You could have got out of half. Once it started going, you could have held the whole thing. You could have done whatever you wanted to do. Um, that is up to you. But ultimately, when I take a trade and I set the risk, I try to let the trades play out. And again, a week and a half is a long time to me to, to give a ch trade a chance to work. So I don't see any reason in killing something like this that soon. But this was a nice short, and we were in it early before that sell-off. Uh, this was Apple. We did the 175 puts that expired the same day, the 22nd. Did this on Wednesday. And this was the 13th, too. Here. Again, this started to go, and then it didn't. You know, so I could have done this another week out. Actually, looking here, I could have done this another week out, and it would have went. But this lost. So I was able to save a little bit in this, but bottom line is that this did not work out. Uh, it just kind of ran out of time, ran out of momentum, sidelined a little bit. And again, when you size your trades, you have to size them accordingly, knowing that some trades are gonna lose. So Apple lost this week. Again, you, it was really the sideways action here, you see, that was going on until it broke. But if I had done it out another week, I would have I would have paid off because it looks like it went all the way down to 168 and changed 167 something. But you know, you're paying up to do that far out. so. It's something I've thought about it over the years. I just, I think the weeklies are, are good. Um, let's do the QQQ 372s. I did this on the Wednesday, 1015. Wait a little bit for this one. So the 372 was here. Again, same thing, same exact thing happened here as in the spy. Gapped up the following day, trade was down. Gap down here, fell off a cliff. So again, you can see here where we did it. It was above the strike. And then you can see where it broke and fell all the way down. This was insane, actually. Um, this was like 15 plus points for the strike. It was really ridiculous and it was a great trade. And it was cheap, $3.50 for one. So you could have spent $350 and bought one, one contract. So if that's all you can do, that's all you can do. What would you have made? You would have made $1,000 with one contract. So again, I'm using 1,050 risk here in this example with three contracts, but you could do less. You could do more. You know, I have the advanced uh, video on YouTube as well, and you could do somewhere in between. But the return on investment for this was 286%. It was a nice trade. Again, sell off in the market. Again, selling, selling pressure. It's, it's the momentum, the momentum trade. Okay, so I'm reading the gap, I'm rating the gap, I'm analyzing the gap using my 26 point rating system, but I'm momentum trading. Then we did the Netflix 400s. Netflix has been selling off like a hot cake. We did this on uh, Thursday the 14th, expired Friday the 22nd. Let's see where Netflix was on the 14th here. Oh, I remember this one. Yeah, so I mean, I even thought that I was in this late, but I wasn't. I knew it was lower. This was a this was a very uh, this was a typical Melissa trade where you can't even believe that it works and then it does <laughs> because really to do a trade here after this massive sell off it's kind of funny. But it wasn't too late and I knew it so I did it and I'm glad that I did. It worked. Cost was six dollars. Again, if we had done the day before, it would have been cheaper. Two contracts was twelve hundred dollar risk. Sold at sixteen. Profit was $2,000, return on investment 167%. And again, all you're really looking for in every single trade is somewhere between 50 and 100. So, you know, when you're getting the help of the market, which we did this week, things can go much, much bigger than you ever anticipate. And we did the 530 Adobe's. Remember this, this was Friday the 15th. This was right over the open I called the 530's. This was expensive to day trade if you did it. Um, and this should have worked out better, to be honest with you. This didn't. This worked, it was a positive trade. It didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do. Stock closed here, gap down, then it rallied. Then it fell here. And again, the trade was positive. I mean, you could have got out of it here with a little bit, but this was really the, the money. But it, this should have gone more, in my opinion. And it wasn't cheap, $7 for one. So again, two contracts, you could have risked 1,400, or you could have done one for 700. But it was more than 100%, which is all that you can ask for. Our profit was 1600 And again, you could have got out of this with money the first day. I wanted it to go bigger. So I was giving it a chance, and then it reversed, and then it dropped. 
So again, this was Adobe. This was a late, late earnings actually in September. And then we did new. New was a really beautiful, beautiful sell off here. 160 puts we did on Friday. That was the same day right after the open. You can see this bar. Stock close here, gap down, open dropped. Again, we did the 160s, fell through all the way down, boom. Really, really nice trade. Again, this is one you could have got in, got out. You could have made more here even if you held it into the following day on the 18th. Broke 155. Really nice sell off. So this was cheap. $2.50 for one, you could have bought one contract for $250. You could have bought two for 500. Sold at 525, profit $1,100, return on investment 110%. Now, if you're someone that's busy and you can't sit and watch for the targets, which I do put on the letter, I don't have that in here, but I put the targets in the letter for people. I have the support, I have the resistance, I have the targets, I have news and notes if there's something's going on. But in reference to your schedule, okay, if you can't watch or you're busy on the day or you're at work or whatever, buy the put. Put a sell order immediately after you get in it. Like you could have bought this at 250, put a sell order at five. If it hits, it hits, you're out. It would have hit and then you would have made 100% without having to watch it. And if it didn't hit, what if it didn't hit? Then you would still be in it into the following week or you could put it at 50%. So again, if you're someone that can watch the chart and again, you're gonna learn this in the class, I say watch the chart, watch the targets in the letter. But if you can't, you have to find a way to manage your trades, but you don't miss them if they go by putting sell orders. And they're day orders or limit orders. They will cancel out after four. You can only trade options during the live day between 9.30 and 4. You can do the cues on the SPY, 10 minutes before the open, 10 minutes after the open, but I don't do them. Okay, and they also have daily, daily cues and SPY option expirations. I'm not calling those. I'm not trading those. I'm not doing those. I have no interest in that. But there are people that are doing those. I know there are in the room, and those are super duper, super duper cheap compared to the ones that the prices of these I'm showing you here out for a week, a week and a half. So that's up to you. But then you're really not giving yourself time to hold it overnight. And you, you almost really have to get the move in the afternoon. I mean, the morning, to be honest with you, because the afternoon's like too late. Because again, time value goes away as the time is disappearing. So this was Friday the 15th, and we did the 922 expirations, and NVIDIA 445s got out of this on the Monday. And this was one, I do remember this one. So this close here, gap down, fell. You could have gone out of it Friday. Gap down again on the following Monday was good, was an exit dropped. You could have held it though. So the 445s, if you held it all the way down, it came down and broke 410 on that day on the 21st, so you could have held this one. I didn't hold this one. But you could have made more if you held this one. I thought that I thought this was a good one. And I wanted to book the profit. $8.50 for one, $850. Sold a 22 profit, $1,350. This was the NVIDIA. These have really gone up a lot in price recently. Return on investment was 159%. Again, sometimes you gotta, if you're gonna take a couple trades, you hold a couple, get out of a couple, chunk it out. I say chunk it. It's like you don't eat when you're eating a cake, you're having one piece of cake. You're not eating the whole cake. So if you take five trades or you take 10 trades, you know, and two are up more than 100%, get out of two, hold eight. You know, so you're really better off splitting your time with things instead of holding to every single solitary thing so you can book some money along the way. And then we did this 5442s again that expired on the 22nd. This was Friday too, I called it. And again, similar sell-off, the exact same type of thing where we had the re, uh, reversal and then it dropped. Then we did, I mean, you could have got out of it actually. You could have got out of it on the Friday into the sell-off. But if you held it, you, you made out. Again, what you could have done is you could have split up your number of contracts. So like, say you did eight. So $1.25 was the cost for this. Risk was 1,000, sold at 10. You could have got out of four. So then you basically wouldn't have lost. So even if the trade wouldn't have continued, you wouldn't have lost. You follow me? If you would have got out of four and then you could have held the rest of them. But this really was the biggest, biggest, biggest trade, which was the Friday the 15th, and then exiting the trade on the Thursday. And it's simply, again, because of the sell-off. So again, just going back here, the 15th was here, and it just, it was never down. 
So from the moment that you did it, it was never done. And again, I sent this out at 11.04. Kind of late, but I knew we still had time to go and I knew we still had plenty of room to go. Uh, then on Monday the 18th, we did this by 440s. It expired that week. Sent it out again, 8.57 in the morning before the open, which I typically send most of the trades before the open. So Monday was here. So first this backed up, then this dropped, then it fell off a cliff. Again, another nice trade, big trade, huge trade for the amount of money you're risking, you know, to look to get out of it. This is how someone then can take a small account and then make a much larger account and grow the account. And I suggest that for people. Say you got 10 grand in an options account. You have a cash account, you can do options, but you can't trade on margin. You want to try to build it up to 25,000. These types of trades will really, really help you do that. Because again, with $10,000 in an account, you could have risked 1,120. And if you made 5280, you basically made more than 50% of your account in one trade. And you, you know, that's how you get to the point where you're building it to get to the 25,000. This doesn't mean that every trade I take works. Obviously Apple lost, but again, it's chunking it out. You're, the idea is to have more winners than losers. This was cheap though, $1.40, eight contracts was $1,120, sold at $8, profit $52.80, return on investment 471%. Beautiful trade, beautiful sell-off. Then we did another video on Monday. Again, this was the day that it gapped down and flipped. 9.45, 44 in the morning, we did the 4.25s. Now this one continued. So that's another idea. If I call two trades and something, two different strikes, get out of the one, do the other one. So we did this here, this backed up, this was down. Then it fell, then it dropped, then it came down here. Again, it was about 410. $7 for one contract, two contracts was a risk of 1400, profit $1,550. And again, 111%. I think this was up more than, because it was down more that last day, the 22nd too. Monday the 18th, we did the QQQ's 370s. So we, I did this late. I knew we were gonna fall into the next day. So it's rare that I call a trade this late in the afternoon, but 258, I called the 370 Qs. I was right. So that was the 18th, it was here. And then we did gap down, then we did fall. This was the Fed day, we gapped up, we failed, we fell off a cliff, gapped down here, and then look, you see where it went. We broke 360, broke 357. So this was two dollars and sixty cents for contracts would have been a risk of 1040 sold 1150 profit was three thousand five hundred sixty dollars with a return on investment of 342 percent again if you have an account let's say you even have an account with twenty five thousand, this is still a huge amount of percentage to make a return on investment of 342 percent of whatever you risk in one particular trade again that this this will cover a loss if you have a loss and then you're still ahead in your account. And that's that's the whole point. You know, the whole point, like I said, is making money. And you really gotta have more winners than losers in order to do this. So the, how do I do that? It's the rating system. It's the 26 points. The 26 points helps me be able to accurately predict the stock's direction and what stock to trade on that particular day. Whether it is a day trade or an option is what I decide. And again, we're doing all stocks and companies you know. And all these options have volume to trade them. We also did Netflix. We did the lower strike in the Netflix. We did the 390s, which I called late on Monday too. And again, you know, it, it really wasn't too late. Here. This just sold off like a hot cake as well. So $3.80, three contracts, risk was 1,140, sold at seven. Profit was $960, return on investment 84%. It was a good trade. And again, we could have gotten this a lot earlier, a lot earlier. Then we did Microsoft, which has been relatively strong, but we did short this. We did a put, we did the 325s on Tuesday the 19th, 928, right before the open, I sent it out. Again, you do the trade into the open. So the 19th was here. Stock close here, gap down, then it pushed back, then it gapped up with the market, then it fell. This was a weird bar, but it did drop all the way down and went down 10 points through the strike. This was 225 for one, five contracts. Risk was $1,125, sold at 550. Profit, $1,625. Return on investment, 144%. A good trade. A good, good, solid trade. And obviously, one that you would have wanted to do. Uh, we also did Oracle. Oracle's been great for us. We did the 112 puts on Tuesday the 19th, too, right before the open. 
just just a nice tray. Again, this was the 19th. Here. So again, fell, dropped. We did a couple in this, actually, now I'm thinking about it. We did a couple of the of the oracles. We did one here. Then we did this one here. You know, it's it's one of these things where again you can stack trades, different expirations, different strikes, uh, particularly if the gap rate's very, very high. And you, and you believe that it will continue and follow through to a much larger target. I'd rather do that than, than take something out for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks because you're going to pay up. Cost of this was 90 cents. Contracts for 12 was 1,080. Sold at 225. Profit was $1,620 and a return on investment of 150%. So, again, if you cannot watch the trade, you put a sell order out, this was one that didn't go right away. Some trades I call do not go right away. Again, here was the 19th, then it had the gap up here, rallied, and then it went and dropped. But I did call this tight. I did, because I called it on Tuesday. and got out of it Thursday, I mean, with the Friday expiration. Then the QQQ 365s, it expired at 922. I called Tuesday, 1042. We did another strike in the Qs. So this was Tuesday, and again, this went, it was going, but then it reversed, then it fell off a cliff, then it was really going, then it broke through the strike, then it got down and here's all the money. Here's all the money that you want. So cheap, $1.75 for one contract, six contracts, risk was a 10.50, sold at $6.80, profit $3,030, return on investment 289%. Another fabulous trade. I mean, again, you could take one contract, you could have risked $175. And anyone that trades should be able to afford that. And actually, if your risk was half of this, you still could have taken multiple contracts. You could have taken three. So just to review, this particular week, the win ratio was 93%. 14 winners, one loser, which was the Apple, 15 trades with an average risk of $1,000. Again, this is not an exact science. Some are a little bit more, some are a little bit less. You, you just can't risk 5000 if you're meaning to risk 1000 Beginner trade of profits for this week, 36925 and the average return on investment was 231%, and that includes the loser. If you are interested in learning my method, if you really want to learn how I came up with these picks, you will take the Golden Gap course, and you will learn how to rate the gaps. It's a class on how to find, pick, and play professional bearish gaps. Class tuition is $69.99. Class is online. can be anywhere in the world and take it. Spots are filling up. I only have three more classes this year. I do have some spots still available for next weekend, but I wouldn't delay if you want to join. The class is October 21st and 22nd, Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. And then the combo gives you the Trends Class 2, which is on Tuesday, October 24th. And so the Trends helps you determine long-term trends in a chart, which will help you for day trading and also options trading. So this class tuition for the combo is $74.99. Again, class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. If you are interested, if you want to sign up, email me at melissathestockswish.com. If you're interested in the options newsletter, standalone, again, email me if you want to sign up for that forms. It's $4,999 for six months or $69.99 for 12. Thanks, everyone, and have a great weekend.